Hey guys, Ultra Maximus here, and I'm back with another Transformers review. This time we're taking a look at a Bayformer. Uh, yeah, for as much as he drives me nuts with uh, the Transformers films, I do have quite a few Bayformers. But the ones I have are, I think, kind of the odd ones, the ones that are a little different. And this definitely takes the cake here. I want to take a look at Ejector. Woo! Remember this guy? You may may or may not, depends on how big of a uh, uh, geek you are with the Transformers films. Uh, this is from Revenge of the Fallen, and he is a toaster. He, uh, you know, this, I love this character, and this is something, you know, I, I, I've got to wonder about the films, and I'd love to sit down and talk to the writers, and my, my fear is, I think, half of the stuff that was written in the film was just kind of half-assedly done, uh, like they had a bunch of ideas on post-it notes on a wall and they threw darts and said, okay, let's include this, this, and this. Um, and I know Revenge of the Fallen was kind of hastily put together because they were dealing with writer strikes and such. So, um, yeah, Ejector. Who is this guy? What is this guy about? Uh, what's going on here? Well, the toy's got a Decepticon logo on it. Uh, well, I don't think he actually has a logo on him, but I know it came in a Decepticon package. Uh, he's not a Decepticon. Uh, he is, at the beginning of the film, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, the shard, the sliver of the Allspark from the first film, burns through the floor out of Sam's room, and, uh, which is kind of funny because it's, like, in his old jersey or jacket or something, and it, it, it doesn't burn through the shirt, but it burns through the floor of a house. The hell. Uh, anyway, it goes through there, and then it sends off its AllSpark energy, and all the appliances in the kitchen go nuts. They all come alive, and they turn into little Transformers. Why is it when the AllSpark makes a brand new Transformer, they're all evil and pissed off? You've got the Nokia phone in the first one that they obliterate. Uh, the Xbox in the first one, um, Ejector or not Ejector, Dispensor, uh, from the first one, who's the Mountain Dew machine. Um, and then the the Cadillac car attacks the girl, um, who is, no, not that girl. I was going to say she's Michael Bay's girlfriend, but that's the girl that Ironhide flips over. In the second movie, she's the um, college dorm person, and I forget who she is in the third one. She's in the third one, too. But anyway, um, yeah, so yeah, they always make these pissed-off little um, Transformers. So you got this gaggle of uh, kitchen appliance Transformers that are basically like little gremlins, and they're running around, and that's what they look like, and the, what's what they act like, and it, it, it's kind of interesting. But... Digress back to the toy. I'm glad they actually made the toy because this is a very oddball character. Uh, you know, this is exactly the kind of stuff I really dig. I would love to have seen an Xbox uh, Transformer toy from the first movie, Dispensor, the, the Mountain Dew machine. Good lord, I wish they would make that. They could still do it. It'd be a great giveaway, and they do the Mountain Dew, or I'm sorry, the Pepsi Optimus Prime figures a lot. Give us a Mountain Dew one. Come on. They, they work with the PepsiCo company a lot. But this is just kind of an oddball, weird character to throw out there and, and to give us a figure for, uh, which I thought was cool. I really, really dig that. In fact, there's one down the street, a flea market down the street has one uh, for sale for four bucks. I think I'm going to buy it. It's still in package, so I may have to pick that one up. Um, yeah, it's just kind of an odd character. And the whole reason that this character even exists in the first place is when they were doing animatics and they had an idea for how this kitchen scene was going to go, they drew these really goofy, kind of very cartoony looking characters and used them in the animatic and they just stuck. And when they did the final renderings, that's what they looked like and that's how this guy came to be. So, looking at the figure itself, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a toaster. Now we see a lot of the, the, lines and stuff in there and you know okay that's fine i mean it is a transformer so it is going to transform it is a four slot toaster up here at the top and then these things basically it looks like an old 50s style toaster now the thing i really dig about it 
is the fact it's got the power button up here and it has the knob to make the toast darker or lighter. I think that is very, very cool. And it's even got the little uh, button that you push to make the toast go down and then it pops up. It's, it's actually a lot of fucking detail for a toaster toy. I just think that's hysterical. And this is almost about the size for like a Barbie, I think. Um, now, I wish they would have done some paint apps to maybe 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 make that look like it's got toast in it maybe uh glowing uh to to uh, uh be toasting toast i guess uh but you know it is what it is i'm not, I'm not going to complain too much the detail that they do have on it is pretty amazing it's even got the little feet for the toaster which is awesome the other interesting bit is uh let's look at the back end here um well first let's look at the front end We've got some nice molding here. Uh, it's just kind of interesting. Again, very 50s kind of style look. The back end, uh, it's kind of open, and we got a bunch of stuff there, but eh, it's no worse than some of the cars they, t they put out in the Transformers line. But it's got... This is what I find interesting. It has a string cord. I just find that very odd. I think... I really do think this is the first transformer to have any kind of string there like that um, attached to it, and it's firmly attached in there. Uh, I just find that very, very fascinating, very cool, very different. I like that, uh, and they didn't make it plastic or anything, and they did include it. The other thing is this. Look at the plug. Look at how different that plug is. And you might say, why does that look so different? Well, some people might just um, dismiss it as it being a toy, so they just put that on there. That's not the case. Uh, that is very good detail, folks. And I'm going to tell you why. You see how it's three-prong, and you got kind of that V at the bottom and the one there, and they're very flat. Okay? You see that? Why? Why is it like that? Well, let me explain it to you, Americans. That... It's a grounded electrical plug, but it is not a United States uh, or a European grounded plug. That plug is used primarily in China and also in Australia. Okay, um, Since it was manufactured in China, I'm presuming that is why that particular plug is there. So that is detail, folks which is very cool. I just I, it, it amazes me such a little toy of a toaster has that much detail into it. That just really impresses me and it just, you know, it really kind of cracks me up that the designers went to that much effort into this figure. So, very very appreciative of that. So, let's look at this guy in robot mode, shall we? All right. So, I lied to you. I was going to just use some video magic and just put him in robot mode. I was playing with it. I'm like you know, I just got to show you how this thing transforms because, again, it's just so impressive how much detail they put into this figure and how complex, for such, for a toaster, how complex it is for his transformation. So let's just look at it. Um, his legs are going to come out like this. Uh, you're going to spin them around like such. And he's got these tiny, tiny little feet. They're going to come out here. Okay. And then the upper half, you're going to take the toaster part and kind of bring it down, okay? And then these are going to become his arms. So you kind of want to fold them back and up like this. And then you can pull the head up. And then you're going to spin them out like such. Spin them around, okay? And then his arms have these little flaps right here that you're going to pull up. You're going to pull out a little robot arm, unfold his hand, close the panel back up. This part becomes another hand, not as articulated, but you're going to do the same same thing over here. There's a little panel right here. It's going to flip up, pull it out, get his hand out, close it, and then you can pull the other hand and then what you want to do is just take this back piece, and I just fold it back up here to kind of round it out, and there he is. How awesome is that? Um, articulation on this guy. 
It's okay. I mean, it's not all that great. Uh, he's got kind of these deer knees at the bottom. This figure does not stand up very well because he has very, very tiny little feet, but that's the way they were in the movie. We have some very, very nice paint apps. Uh, nice orange here and here on his legs. These arms pose very, very well in the hands, and they've got some very nice molded detail in them, uh, which is very impressive. The other set of hands are just kind of there. They're kind of hooked underneath uh, the front part of the toaster, which is okay. It's just kind of an extra set of hands. It's just kind of funny. Why, notice how the Michael Bay toys always have like four or five different arms. And that's one thing we'll say about the Bayformers are they, they are unconventional robots compared to the Generation 1 figures. Um, yeah, just kind of cool. Now, he does have the Decepticon. He's got a little black Decepticon logo there. Um, I was questioning that at the beginning of the video, but he does have that there. And then he's got this crazy, crazy face. He's like, ah, these the crazy eyes. And it looks really goofy, but that's the way he looked in the film. So it is actually very screen accurate, and that's the way he looks in the concept art uh, that's out there. I think that was on, I think I picked that up on a Blu-ray um, uh featurette. I think that's where I got that from. But yeah, pretty cool. Um, there's a little 2008 car, a Tommy logo down there. Um, let's see, do we have, and then Hasbro is on the other side over there. So yeah, I mean, very cool little figure. I, I rarely keep him in this mode. In fact, this is probably the first time in a couple of years that I've seen the figure actually in this mode. I usually just keep him as a toaster, and he sits on my shelf that way. So just an impressive, goofy, strange, oddball character and figure. But I do appreciate the fact that they actually made this guy. I think he's very, very cool. So, um, yeah, I just very neat. Just I, I love... Love the detail on the guy. Um, it's kind of hard to see here, but the under the, uh, the 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 painting under here, and it's molded in, kind of um, kind of looks like the internal workings of a toaster. Uh, the 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 coils that heat up, uh, kind of that it's that orangish reddish color of, of that glow of a toaster going. So really dignant, very cool. Um, ejector. I mean, there he is. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked it. Um, I love these oddball little characters, and I got a couple more I'll do at some point in time, but there he is. Revenge of the Fallen. Ejector! <laughs>